everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a Genie Vlogger, and we are here at IAJGS 2019, and I have another amazing special guest with me today. If I could please have you introduce yourself to everybody. So my name is Eli Rubinowitz. I was born in South Africa, live in Perth, Australia, which is one of the most isolated cities in the world, but I still got to Cleveland. Wonderful. Yeah, so the world's tiny place for me. Very small. Yeah. <laughs> now, can you tell us about your history in genealogy, getting into it, and the research that you've done? So I've, I've had a very lucky run in genealogy because I like to connect with people. I'm uh, somewhat tangential. One of my websites is called Tangential Travel. <laughs> so I'm all over the show. You're just going to bring me back in line. But when you're all over the show, you find things that maybe other people don't find. And I think in, uh, in genealogy is quite a good um, uh, attribute to have. Uh, Jewish Gen has been uh, my major resource. But then I started writing uh, web pages when I found towns and I saw that uh, people wanted to share the information or wanted to find things. And the more I got involved, and I'm involved with a lot of social media, so Facebook, I'm always at my maximum <laughs> of 5,000. I find I have different friends, fans, whatever, people um, that connect. It's all about connecting, yes? Yeah. And it's about sharing. So if you want to hold things to yourself, I think then it works out that you don't actually tend to get a lot from other people. Very you know, true. It's two-way traffic. So, and I'm outgoing personality, so that, that <laughs> works for me. Now you have a really amazing project that you're running called We Are Here. Yes. Can you give us a little bit of a background of it and then tell us what the project actually encompasses? So everything works off the fact that I'm outgoing. So I share, I blog, and a school in Johannesburg, South Africa saw one of my posts Fana from Chanukah wasn't actually on uh, Jewish, it was Jewish history, but not family history. And the head of Jewish uh, studies at that school, it's a complex of three schools, um, King David, wrote to me and said, um, we see you coming to visit family here, would you be able to come and talk to us about the meaning and significance of Zorbi Kaimor, which is the part of the song, which I knew very little about myself, and I was given the time um, a uh, time span of three weeks till I was going to be in the, in the city. And uh, so I got onto YouTube and to other sources, social networks. But YouTube was, was probably particularly good. And I don't get lost <laughs> when I get lost. Oh, I like YouTube. <laughs> yes. So I did find, for example, genres of the partisan songs. Yeah. So people sing it for different reasons, you know, particularly active people who weren't Jewish. You know? yeah. Uh, it's got a message in it, and so I was able to put something together. He gave me a time limit, which I'm sort of broke. You know, so you can speak for 20 minutes. And my first gig was in front of 600 high school students, wow. who, generally speaking, are not the most focused people. You know, yeah. they were over the show, but they were they were pretty switched on to what I was trying to do. And I also have a, a particular method of when they get it. So I was working with the kids up in the control room from the school, and I said, when I show you my finger, whatever, go to the next, because I wasn't controlling it from the podium. Oh, yeah. So I said, go to the next slide or the next video. And that's very important, if you see that people get it. So you have a, a, a two-way traffic and empathy. I mean, it's, big, it's difficult with a big crowd of 600 kids, but you can get a feeling that they've got it. So you go into the next thing and keep it moving. It's going to yeah. move, because they don't have time to mess around with these <laughs> long stories. So that's my style and works for me. So um, from that school, I went to another school in Cape Town and we did a bigger project there um, because what we did is we involved schools in the former Soviet Union, ORT schools, ORT is the, the world ORT's the largest Jewish non-governmental education organization in the world. And it's based in London, but it, its strengths are the former Soviet Union, that's in America and so on. And um, so I worked with the schools there where we gave them uh, heads up of what we wanted, you know, talk about the partisans, talk about the ghettos, so that they came to the online meeting, which was controlled by Steve Sherman in Cape Town. You know, he's got the skills to get 10 schools or more, he says now, all together online, you know, for a period of time and flip the, the switches and get everyone <laughs> not all talking at once. And it was fantastic. And it was about the partisan song. But the program is expanded now to We Are Here, which is the last line of the partisan song, which is Zorkni Kaimor, Yiddish, that's the English version, and We Are Here is a statement, We Are Here, it's a, yeah. you're making a statement. And it's a very positive poem, it was written by Hirsch Glick uh, in, in Vilnius in Lithuania in, in 1943, and it's been sung by the partisans and the survivors since, yeah. 
but we now have a problem because they are all aging and you know what getting to a point where who is taking on that legacy and it is very much a touch and go situation because it was sung in Yiddish initially and like places like Israel they don't really want to sing it in Yiddish they sing it in Hebrew and that's fine you know you do it in the language that you understand yeah so I managed through uncovering lots of different versions of it for example at the British Library in London I found uh, you know you go into the you sign up for the library and you go and you research like my old days at yeah. my own <laughs> University of Cape Town and I found 14 versions of it in different languages you know from Polish to um, English to uh, Swedish whatever but that sort of urged me to go and look for more versions and to collaborate with educators around the world who could translate it so we're now up to 28 language versions wow. and <clears throat> the thing that got me going at the at, 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 up to this point is that we we got somebody to um, translate it into an Aboriginal language called Noongar which is the language they speak in my city in Perth but not a language you hear them speaking you know, but it's, it's spoken in 1938 William Cooper uh, indigenous Australian who was offended by what he saw at Crystal Mark and he wrote a petition and he marched 10 kilometers, an old man, late 70s, to the German consulate in Melbourne. And he tried to present the petition. They did not accept it. They rejected it. He left it there, I believe. And, and then I connected with somebody, a lady in North Queensland, in Australia, um, Barbara Miller, who could research this before me. And um, what I discovered that was, he was an upstander. And then the American dis uh, government discovered me through the Department of uh, the State Department, but in my city of Perth, I was blogging on Facebook, and somebody saw interesting things that she thought she'd like to connect with me, and we got together, and she said we would like to do a project because we think your project fits the human rights um, environment that we want to promote, and uh, but we can only. Um, employ American citizens <laughs> and will pay them. So I remember somebody I'd met at a Jewish Gen conference or IHHS conference in Seattle in uh, three years ago, Nance Adler, who was a larger than life character, amazing educator. And I said, would you like to come to Australia? I've got a project, but the project's not signed off on. You know, we've got to fight for it. We've got to get the money. Um, and she said, I'd love to. And um, so I went back to the consulate and I had the project, they loved it. And then we had to wait some time and then we were, had a lucky break. Some money came back to them for a project that came through and it was a substantial amount of money. And as we stand now, we've got uh, Nance Adler coming to Australia on, on Friday. Um, and I'm going to back to Australia from here, from uh, Cleveland. And um, we're gonna start the official part of the, the project on Sunday in Perth. So we've got events and we're working with four universities uh, in our hometown, only five universities, so four, that's pretty good. And with several schools, with several um, people involved in multicultural education. And um, that is going to, and also the Jewish community. And it's about the, the, the upstanders and the story of how the partisans um, he, um, encouraged that, that um, concept, but also linking it back to the indigenous Australians who were upstanders in 1938. And it's a, it's a very powerful message. And the message is um, something that is global. It's yeah. not limited to our particular town. And we hopefully, hopefully we can expand it from there. Very cool. Now, if, if people wanted to learn more about the project, where, where okay. could they go? So if you remember websites, HTTPS, colon, <laughs> forward slash, forward slash, WAH dot foundation. That's a W A H dot F O U N D A T L I O N foundation. Yeah. <laughs> Normal spelling, and you'll come to us straight awesome. to us. Don't pass go. Yeah, get straight to us. <laughs> Perfect. Easy. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. It was wonderful to have you. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. <laughs>